Hey guys, Tailwaz here, back with some more Iron Sight. The cruise map update is finally here, and with it being the biggest update yet, the anticipation is high. Let's get into this video and see what the guys over at Whipple have brought us this time. Last week we were given a little bit of information about the cruise map that was to come. Well, here it is. And with it, we've got bug fixes, weapon balances, a new map, and much more. Let's start off with the new cruise map itself. I've already showed you the guys the footage of the map in the last video. This map you can play Team Deathmatch, Search and Destroy, Secure Point, Resource Takeover, Sniper Match, and Free For All. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about the user interface, which has received a major overhaul. The lobby screen now shows the contracts, ongoing events, and the progress bar on the left while your character is on the right. The loadout tab has also been reworked, integrating the character customization into the equipment loadout screen. This means for each loadout you can have a differently selected character. For loadout 1 you could have Neil Wild, for 2 Sarah Browning, and for 3 the new character Sirocco just for examples. Next up with the user interface is the new collections tab. Here is where you can see exactly what you already have unlocked, all that's left to unlock, and how to unlock the ones you still need. I think this tab makes it much easier to figure out exactly what you need in order to get the skins you really want. Next up with this update is the introduction of a new game mode called Special Modes. The first game within that game mode is called Sniper Match. Sniper Match is a 6 vs 6 game mode where you try to eliminate the enemy team using only a sniper loadout. There are no respawns during a round. For this game mode, you are going to be using a locked loadout. Regardless of what you pick for your loadout, you will spawn with the DSR-1, Attack Ops, whichever melee weapon you currently have equipped on the class you chose, a claymore, and a smoke grenade. For your drones, everyone will be locked into using the Stalker, the Spy, and the UAV drones. This game mode is available on all maps except for Downtown. Something to note about this game mode is that skills are disabled for everyone. Also, you gain level experience for your character, but only receive weapon experience for the DSR-1 if you already own it. They've added a whole bunch of other random stuff like charms, new skins for sites, most of them being zebra prints, and more cosmetic stuff that I really don't want to get into. If you guys are really interested in knowing about all this cosmetic stuff that was added into the game, I'll leave a link to the patch notes down below. You can go check it out for yourselves and see exactly what was added. But something that I do want to talk to you guys about are the weapon tweaks and nerfs they've made. Quite a few of the guns have been rebalanced, and even the hitbox has been reworked. So let's talk about these changes and see what's happened. First off, the DMRs have both been reworked. The HK-417, they've increased the damage multiplier for the head, neck, and chest shots, making head shots a one-hit kill and two hits being needed for neck and chest shots. They've decreased accuracy from 65 to 60 and also decreased mobility from 92 to 90. The M39 EMR has received the same multiplier changes and has its accuracy stat decreased from 61 to 60 and the mobility stat from 92 to 90, making them the same as the HK417. The M39 has also had its recoil control stat increased from 70 to 73. I'm sure you're all really curious as to how this affects the bolt action rifles, so let's take a look at those. With this update, they've changed the ADS method in which the crosshair is reduced when fully zoomed. They've also increased the difficulty by lowering the zoom speed, making it harder to react to other players at close range. At longer ranges, distances will now affect the damage given, meaning that sniper rifles will now have a drop off as well. On top of all that, the sway of your sniper rifles has been increased a lot when you're not holding your breath with the shift buttons. So let's talk about the guns themselves. The DSR-1 has received a decrease in the damage multiplier for the head, neck, shoulders, chest, and stomach shots. Also, like I mentioned a second ago, the sway is bigger and faster when aiming. The Blazer R93 has also received a decrease in the damage multiplier for head, neck, and chest shots. It has also received a slower aiming speed, making those quick scopes a little harder, and like mentioned for the DSR-1, the Blazer's sway is also bigger and faster when aiming. On top of those changes, the Blazer has received a decreased mobility stat from 88 to 86. Not only have the bolt action sniper rifles themselves been changed up, but the straight pull attachment has also received a nerf, making it half as effective. These semi-auto snipers have also been looked into. Recoil control stats have been increased, but the fire rates of those same guns have been decreased. Let's take a look at the specifics.
The CF X50's damage multiplier has been decreased for head, neck, and arm shots, along with the rate of fire being decreased from 33 to 21, and the recoil control stat being increased from 59 to 69. The PSG-1's head and neck shot multipliers have been decreased. The mobility stat is increased from 84 all the way to 88. The recoil control stat is increased from 54 to 69. And the rate of fire is dropped down from 35 to 23. The SVD's damage multiplier for head and neck shots have been decreased. The rate of fire is also decreased from 37 to 25. They've increased the recoil control stat, however, on the SVD from 53 to 64. So those are the semi-auto snipers. They've been slowed down a lot, but that should make them more controllable. Moving on to the LMGs, they've messed around a bit with the recoil control and increased the damage multiplier for arms and leg shots. Let's look at the guns and see what they've done to them. The MK46, as mentioned before, received an increased damage multiplier to shoulders, arms, and leg shots. They've decreased the accuracy from 73 to 64, increased the rate of fire from 78 to 81, and decreased recoil control from 45 to 44. The Ultimax 100 has received an increased damage multiplier, but only for the leg shots. They've decreased the damage stat from 30 to 28, decreased the accuracy stat from 73 to 64, decreased rate of fire stat from 79 to 67, and increased recoil control from 36 to 49. The MG3 has received similar increases to the damage multiplier for the shoulder and arm shots, as well as a few stat changes. They've increased the damage stat from 30 to 32, decreased accuracy from 73 to 64, increased the rate of fire from 83 to 94, and increased recoil control by one point from 45 to 46. Moving along to the PKP, they've increased the damage multiplier for the shoulder, arms, and leg shots on this one, and tinkered around with a few of the stats. They've decreased the accuracy of the PKP from 73 to 64, increased rate of fire from 67 to 69, decreased recoil control from 33 to 27, and decreased the fire rate from 100 to 97. Not only have the primary weapons received tweaks, but the EMP MSGL has also been worked on. They've increased the damage from 2.9 to 3, and increased the rate of fire from 13 to 15. Now these changes might seem very small, but they might do a whole lot of a difference. I'm not quite sure I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. Let me know down in the comments if you've had a chance to use it yet and if you've noticed a difference with it at all. Another one of the huge changes that's coming is the changes to the hitboxes. You'll see in the picture that they've changed the hitbox size of the chest and the stomach, making the stomach larger and the chest smaller, meaning it will be a little bit harder to land the chest shots for the two hit kills if your aim is off by just a little bit. So make sure to hit those that upper chest, guys. Another change that took place is the formula used for the calculation of damage depending on the range of the target that has also been updated, meaning that ranges will have to be taken into consideration a lot more now when in a gunfight than previously. On top of all this, there have been random bug fixes and improvements to the game. So now that we've gotten through all this information, I'm incredibly curious to know what you guys think of all this. Do you think these changes will help the game or will the changes affect the game in a negative manner? I mean, there are a lot of changes to the core mechanics of the game, and to me it sounds like it will be a whole new experience. So let me know what you think. Do you think the changes have made a drastic difference to how the game plays, or does it still feel the same as the same old Iron Sight we've been playing for months now? I want to know what you think. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please smack that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content just like this. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later!